It is August 7th. It's a Wednesday and that means that I have been in the bullet journal set up for an entire week. Now it's early in the a.m. on Wednesday so it's like not a full seven days but you know we're gonna go with it. So I have finished reading the bullet journal method by writer Carol and I've marked it up. I am going to be doing a full review on this um, in a separate video just you know breaking it down into the parts that it's already pretty much broken down into <laughs> the five parts but today I thought I would walk you through my bullet journal thus far and we could kind of talk about how I set up things as opposed to how writer Carol um, mentions that you can um, or should set up things I mean he doesn't it's like weird I say like how he says to because in the back of the book in the end he says is there a wrong way to bullet journal and the answer is actually yes and I thought he was gonna say no you can just do whatever you want but <laughs> He doesn't. So anyway, here we go. So I got my two pens. I haven't used this at all. It's sort of there for decoration, but I enjoy that pen because it fits in there very nicely. So there's that. Now this pen, the uh, Paper Mate, this is the 0.5 and it's a gel pen. And it does state on here that it's a quick dry pen and it's for less smears. And I think that's important to mention. It says less. It doesn't say none. It says less because I will hopefully try to remember to show you where I've been smearing in here, which really annoys me. Um, the most that I can personally find as far as a pen is concerned that doesn't smear are things like the friction pen and anything that's like a, a ball, a roller ball pen, works perfectly fine. Sometimes the hybrids, like the ones that come with the Hobonichis, they work well too, but sometimes I find that I skip, like it's not always a consistent nice writing with those pens and my handwriting is sloppier with them. So I'm kind of bummed that this is smearing. Less smears, yeah. All right, anyway, moving on. The only difference that I really made was this one right here for completed because it was really hard for me to get into marking an X in the past. Like I would start out this way and then something would happen and there would be a shift and all of a sudden I was doing this. <laughs> and it wasn't like a conscious thing. So I thought, well, I'm gonna put this here cause I'm probably just gonna do that. But I tried really hard to stay with this and so far I've been able to. So cool. I still think it's really weird that he has this in the back, you know, um, in his system and he didn't like put that as one of his you know signifiers I don't understand that but or bullets or whatever the hell you want to call them bullets and signifiers yeah so I am going to use this today because I actually just got a text a minute ago and my bullet journal was in here waiting to be filmed uh, where I have a dentist appointment for teeth cleaning and I did put like the open appointment and then the completed appointment so I would hopefully remember to put that in there so I should put that on my monthly right now before I forget because I'm going to okay that was always there all right so the other thing that I changed was adding in highlighter now I haven't actually used a highlighter which you will see it's very monochrome it's very like low-key as far as I'm concerned yeah I've still done a few things like add washi uh, for the dates because I'm you know I just wanted them to look really uniformed in that way but I, I haven't used any highlighter thus far and that might be changing um, as soon as my other journal fills up that's in my traveler's notebook and everything including my writing will move into here okay so my little flappies here that I keep my uh, sticky notes on these are not a writer carol thing these are things that i like to do that i pulled from the traveler's notebook world that i like to do in my traveler's notebooks you certainly don't have to this is not like part of the setup i just enjoy this i've seen other people stick a bunch of post-its on pages in here and i just don't like the way it looks and i think they stick better on this anyway so you can totally skip that if you want to I did go ahead and add some wordage here. This is one of my favorite quotes by George Orwell. When I sit down to write a book, I do not say to myself, I am going to produce a work of art. I write it because there is some lie that I want to expose, some fact to which I want to draw attention, and my initial concern is to get a hearing. I think that is the most beautiful quote ever, and I think it's so true 
for me as an author, I feel the same way. When I'm sitting down to write something, I am trying to expose something in society because a lot of times I like to write either dystopian or speculative fiction. So I just, I love him so much. And this quote just means a lot to me as a writer. So I did go ahead and put one of these like pockets on. I can't remember where I got it from. Planner Press, something like that. It's starting to turn a little bit yellow, but I didn't care. I don't know if it's coming up on camera. Yeah, because I've had it for like over a year and I've never used it. So I was like, I'm going to put that in here. And then I just put it in there to hold this stencil by Hobonichi because I like to use this little, it's called box. I don't know if you can see it or not. Is it better that way? I don't know. But it's just like a little square that I use um, down here by the page numbers. And I will show you that. I've seen, I think you've seen it before, but yeah. I like to use this. I wanted to put it in the back, but I never go into the back and I was afraid I would forget about it. So I, I keep it right here where I can see it. I've been using this page. It's been working out well. You'll see the first seven days of the month are already gone. No worries there. It's been peeling off very easily. I love it. So the first thing we're going to get into is the index. And I was already having some struggles. <laughs> So they went ahead and they added into the index the future log and the instructions which are in the back of the book. And then I went ahead and added in collections. Now I I don't know what it is about me, but I kind of want things to be in numerical order. You know, that's just kind of like who I am. And I my first instinct, because this is at the end of the book, was to skip and put them, the collections rather, down here because you know the pages are getting bigger the page numbers rather and when I saw that they didn't do that I was like okay I'm gonna try it you know writer Carol style I don't like it uh but I did it anyway <laughs> yeah it's just like a thing where I just feel like it should go at the very end because these are the very end of, of the book as far as pages are concerned I don't know why but I don't think that's like crazy I think a lot of people feel that way but I did it this way so basically in the back of the book which is where we're going to start. I washi taped off the side so it's easier to find. And I decided to start my collections on page 230. Um, and that just gives me the last 10 pages because I like to keep my collections in Google Keep. I don't know that I'll need 10 pages, but I thought, hey, if you want them, here they are. So yeah, I decided to go ahead and put one of the first things that you'll find in the book, which is the mental inventory. And I'll show you how that looks in here. Like this, it's on page 39, um, but I put 37 over here to remind me that that's where the beginning, where it talks about the mental inventory is. So writer talks about when you're struggling with decision fatigue, those are you know his words, and you want to distance yourself from all of that, you can get some perspective by making the mental inventory. And basically he says that you can get a sheet of paper. I just decided to use it in the back of my book so I could refer to it later. I don't know. I was like, why not? Let's just do it in here. And he kind of uses this analogy of a closet. He basically says, you know, if you were going to clean out your closet, you pretty much take everything out and you slowly start to put back in only the things that you need. So that's sort of like his process. So this is no different than a brain dump, other than the fact that you basically have more of a structured brain dump because you have some categories. You break it down into three sections. The first one is the things that you're working on. The second one is the things you should be working on. And the third is want to be working on. So I went ahead and I started, you know, doing this this morning. I actually didn't do it before because I forgot all about doing it because I haven't been at like the beginning of that book for like ever. And so I was like going through and saying, okay, what am I gonna talk about? And I was like, oh yeah, I haven't done this. So this is kind of fresh in my mind. So for August, I am continuing revising Silence because I didn't finish revising it last month when I won Camp Nano. I still had about a fourth of my novel left. So that is something I should be working on those two line up. So those two things line up. There are a couple other things that line up and I forgot to like write them side by side, but you know, whatever. It's like, <laughs> it's a process. I will try to remember for the next time. Then my blog, I am working on it and I should be working on it, but I didn't put it here at all because I think I'm like avoiding, I'm avoiding this blog so hard and it's, it's cool. I just get so nervous about new things. So I'm going to put should blog. 
Okay, we're moving on. Podcast Canva. Canva is something I should be working on and you'll find it right here because I'm paying for this. This is a monthly subscription and if I'm not working on it, then I'm just wasting that money and why do I have it? Live streaming, this is something that I'm working on, but you can see it's not like high priority, uh, but it's just something I'm really interested in wanting to do. And it costs money, so I needed to kind of sit down to figure out how much money it was going to cost for me to either get a camera or get the equipment to set up my DSLR. So yeah, I took some time to do that. Jade, summer reading. We're going to be starting a new book, and I have reading over here because that is a priority. So Jade, summer reading here. Then we have keto, um, and I'm talking about health over here. So that is something that's actually a priority that I am working on. Then over here in the want to pile, <laughs> I have YouTube. I really want to work on more YouTube stuff, but I'm just not finding enough time to do that. New novel. I really do want to start a new novel. It's been, you know, in the back of my mind for a while now because I've been working on silence and I haven't been giving it any time or attention. So... That's something I really want to do. I was hoping I could wait until Preptober so I could start prepping this new novel for NaNoWriMo, but I don't know. It just, it won't leave me alone. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Short fiction. I always want to write short fiction and yeah, there's time to write short fiction. It's just, I'm trying to do that thing where you focus on one project because if I get lost in short fiction, this will not get done and this needs to get done. It just, it does. Live streaming, again, I really want to work on this, but because of the fact that it does cost some money and I'm on a no spend right now because we will be going to Denver soon, um, it's getting put on the back burner or else I'd probably be not only right now, I'm just working on like what I would need to buy and looking at videos for how the, the whole setup works, but I would be spending money on this if I wasn't in a no spend. So I'm kind of glad I am because I don't need to be doing this. I need to be working here, not here, but here. <laughs> Okay, Fat Queen is a novel that's probably not going to be the name, but it's one that I did like, not even the bare bones for, it was just like a thought that I wrote down. And this has also been bothering me a lot lately because I really have been wanting to write this for like two years now, two summers. So this might be the novel I work on for Nano since this has been in the back of my head longer than the newer novel that's been coming up sequel to silence I got to finish this before I can do this but I already want to start writing some parts of it because I had no choice but to write some parts down so I wouldn't forget them when it comes time to start the novel and I just started to like get lost in this and want to start a new book and I can't because I got to do this we have to finish this <laughs> the Hemingway app is an app that's supposed to be really cool it's kind of like Grammarly except this one you can buy full out I don't know if it's $20 or $30 but you can buy it and own it unlike um, Grammarly where you pay like a monthly fee so I thought maybe I would try this it was suggested by a couple of people and these are some libraries that I want to get to by the end of summer especially this one because it's college and uh, school will be starting in a couple of weeks so I want to go before it gets too busy because I love the campus uh, my niece and I went once but I want to go and sit and do like a full day of writing where I do some walking and I go and take lunch come back and um, work at the library because they have summer courses so the library is actually open and because I'm an alumnus I can go ahead and use a password to get and log on to the computers and check out books which is kind of awesome and then we have the master class I need to work more I want to work more on this and it's sort of like I should be working on because I my boyfriend paid for it he renewed it for my birthday again so I should be working on it a little bit because, you know, yeah, I'm going to put it over here. Since I ran out of space, I'm just going to put MC and I know what that means. Yeah. But yeah, I really want to be working on Masterclass. I love this thing. It's just I don't have enough time in the day. There's just not enough hours. Okay, so that is my mental inventory. And I did it pretty much like how writer does it. Uh, stuck to the style. I, of course, didn't put it on a piece of paper. I put it on the back. But, you know, whatever. So that was the start of me following the bullet journal method. Now we're going to flip back to the front and I'll show you the rest. So now we can turn to page... 
56 and 57. So this spread is all about the key concepts in the bullet journal method. And it kind of goes, you know, into a little bit of detail about each on this page, but then he takes them all into their own little like sections and he talks a little bit more about them. So, so the first is the index and he says, use to locate your content in your bullet journal using topics and page numbers. So I have never, I've been pretty open and honest about this, used the, the index in the past. It's just not like a thing. I use but writer does give you this really kind of cool tip that I thought might help me want to use the bullet journal and that's basically um, to create an index for like a project or a major collection so writing is always a major project for me and you can give yourself your own index so basically instead of having to look through all four pages of your index for your writing all of your writings all in one place and I thought that was kind of cool so I went ahead and put a little bit of washi and put writer on the side here because I had this and I I put it in two columns because I'm assuming I'm gonna have a lot throughout as um, I finish up that insert that I'm in right now. And this is just a cool way where all of my writing will be on one page. Now, hopefully, <laughs> it sounds great in theory, but hopefully I will remember to actually use it. Who knows, who knows, but I've set it up and it's there. Moving on, so we have short-term, mid-term, and long-term goal. In the bullet journal method, that is called something completely different, let's see. Haha, -ha, page 154, I wrote it down. Good job, Sylvia, because I would never found that. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like this. So he says that you should make a promise to yourself not to revisit your goals or your 54321 um, basically until they are completed or they have been marked as irrelevant. So the way he sets this up is five is for five years, four is for four months, three is for three weeks, two for two days, and one for an hour. I personally don't understand the concept of the one hour or the two days. And he basically breaks down five years into long term, four and three is midterm goals, and then two and one are short term goals. Um, yeah, I feel like if it's an hourly thing, it should just go on your daily. Do you know what I'm saying? If it's a two day thing, and you can't put it on your daily, then you should probably just put it on your monthly. So those are the things that I, I feel about that. Um, now, if you wanted to, like in my mind, the way it would make sense is if you had a bunch of hourly things, right? Like you wanted to paint for an hour, find an hour to paint. Um, just make a collection in my mind, you know what I mean? Of all of the things that you can do in an hour. So if you have an extra hours of time, if you have an extra hour or so of time, you can look at that collection and be like, okay, this is all I want to do. Why do we need to put it on short term? That makes no kind of sense to me, but you know, you do you, you know, it's not everything is going to work for you. That's fine. <laughs> this does not work for me. Uh, the two day, again, it's the same thing. He's like, okay, clean out the closet, clean kitchen. That's probably because if you do a thorough cleaning, it's probably going to take two days. And that makes sense. But you can just make a collection for like deep cleaning. Do you know what I'm saying? That makes more sense to me than one hour, two days. I don't, I don't, you know, and that's okay. That's okay. So I decided to go ahead and do short term and I did mark them one hour, two days because that's what he does. But then I decided short term for me meant by the end of the summer. We're already in August. Summer for a lot of people is at the end of September. Uh, I tend to think of summer a lot of times as the end of August because that's when my niece and nephew go back to school and my whole schedule changes. But since I'm already doing, uh, you know, the, the challenge, hot and sticky challenge, uh, and that goes till the end of September, I was like, okay, summer's at the end of September right now. So I started to make a collection for the end of summer, which is basically around two more months. So then we go to the midterm here. And I did mark that he writes, you know, three weeks and four months, but I decided my midterm was going to be the end of 2019. Since there's around five months left of the year, I thought that was a nice like midterm goal. So I wrote some things out for that. Then long term, I put five years and I was okay with five years. I was like, yeah, nothing wrong with five years being long term. Totally. So uh, I guess if you wanted to break them out in two years, one, two, three, four, five, you certainly could do so. But I was like, yeah, we're just gonna throw it all in the same place. I could always put like two years, but I thought it was going to probably take me two years to finish that uh, right next to it if I wanted to. I didn't feel like I needed to do that. I was like, this is just for later. 
keep it in the back of your mind kind of so that it's not like out of the way but that you can still refer to it so it's always kind of present but not driving you insane do you know what i mean cool so that's sort of how i'm using the five four three two one um method or i don't remember what you call it does it call it a method practice turn in the page now we're on to the future log so the future log i don't know if i wrote a number down for that so here we have the future log and he basically says that you can number pages five through eight but those are already numbered for you if you got the um bullet journal version of the lystrum divide pages into six cells now i went ahead and divided mine into four because i wanted a little bit more space and because i thought these were so cute i really wanted them in there i could have certainly fit probably three but you know whatevs Plus the fact that I wasn't going to be fitting a full year in here, so, you know, whatevs. And then you're supposed to label the cells with the month and then add future tasks and events. Add it to your index. And this was already added to my index, so I didn't have to do that. I probably should redo it since, you know, I screwed up. <laughs> and part of my, I still can't believe I did that, um, yeah, is on page five instead of, you know, ending on page four. But, you know, I can do that whenever. So one of the things that I am doing different, I'm not like following this completely. And let me see where the future log is here in the back. So here is his future log here. You can see that he broke him into three cells. I already wrote that I'm not following it completely because he's never used these little um, calendars. That is something like the Bujo people or somebody awesome came up with. I like that. I think it's great because at some point I think I would want to have a year at a glance anyway, or at least the remaining months of the year. And so this allows me to do that. I don't mind adding it in. It's certainly not something that he does. Um, I wasn't gonna do the work because again, this is simple or lazy planning. And <laughs> I just went ahead and printed these out, which might be more complex than other people are willing to do, but you know, I know how to do it. So it was fine for me. Stickers, I put them in there. I'm not gonna get it together to draw this out. Neither do you, but certainly don't have to do this if you're following uh, writer's original you know, method. So I went ahead and stuck those in. So that's like the major thing that's different. And then I had never used like the dots and the open like events circle before. So I tried to do that here and you can see that um, I went ahead and I put the uh, little events here for people's happy birthdays. And I decided birthdays would go under the calendars and off to the side would be any like major events, um, holidays and what have you there. I guess I could actually, no, I think that's a lie. Actually, I decided to put holidays on the same with birthdays over here on the side. You can see here that I went ahead and I, I backlogged some stuff because I wanted there to be equal amounts of months here and I didn't want this to be like its own page, August. So that worked out fine. Have a birthday and the 4th of July and that was all I needed to do. So then we get into August, which is the monthly. Okay, so set up the monthly log. So it says number the pages, title the pages, list the dates and month tasks, add nine to your index. So you don't have to do like what they consider like I guess a cover page, I don't even know, where I just kind of put some goals and things that I wanna accomplish for August and I still haven't filled this completely out because I've been busy but I started to attempt it and I enjoy having a cover page but again, not something that the bullet journal method, you know, says you need to do you don't have to i chose to then over here um again i pretty much stuck to what he does um in some of his later videos he decided to do the tracker i'm doing terrible with it i hate it i decided that i would try it also on the days and it's working out best for me there so i'll probably nix this the next month and just have more space to write things i am using this basically in the way of capturing like one important thing that happened in the day so I can kind of look back and kind of be like oh yeah I remember what happened that day uh, I like doing that I left a column for my signifiers off to the side here and on Sundays I have a little asterisk to remind me that those are the days that I'm weighing in uh, but everything else is pretty simple next to the monthly you're going to set up your tasks which I've done. I try to organize them a smidge. Um, it's just gonna be a hot mess and I'm okay with that because I write as I'm you know, on the go and it's totally fine. So 
it's cool. I divided it in half. He doesn't say anything about doing that in here, but I wanted more space to um, make things a little bit more even. I think if I just used one line, it would get, you know, I'd waste part of it. And this allows me to use more of the space, I think, a little bit better than I would if I just used one line. I think that this is, I'm looking at the wrong one. So there's actually like two of these. I was like, where are all my numbers? It tells me where this is. So here's this one with the key concepts. And this is what? Set up your bullet journal. Using your, okay, so I, I don't know why. I guess this one adds on a couple things like collection. No, collection's on here. So the only thing that this one adds on, I think, is the mental inventory. Whatever, I meant to be looking at this one, so. Does it say anything different? <laughs> that was so weird. I was like, where are all my page numbers? Anyway, back to the key concepts. <laughs> now we're moving on to the daily log. Okay, so before we get to the daily log, I did go ahead and I added a collection. So let's see what they say about collections. Um, so it says index, future log, monthly, daily. I guess they're supposed to come after that. I'm just putting them as they go. This was a nice place for me to have them because I didn't think I was going to do collections in the back. But, you know, as long as you're indexing thing and you know where everything is, like, don't worry about it. Do it as you go or in the back. Do you. I guess I'm doing both. So these are my writing projects. I just, you know, kind of had to do a little bit of a brain dump here about them. And then I left an extra page so that I could break them down into smaller um increments kind of make it a little bit more doable so it's not so overwhelming uh yeah but the major ones are right here then we go into my dailies and my dailies are pretty boring uh, most people probably wouldn't align them but since i wasn't going to use washi on every single page because i'm not going to get that together i just thought they looked pretty boring and i wanted them to look a little bit more um i don't know i just i just took a ruler and i took a, a line across the page. It didn't take much effort and I enjoyed that. This is the washi tape that you see at the beginning here. I just cut them out and then I of course lined around them just again to give it a little bit of style or flair. I don't know. It's still very simplistic. Uh, you can see that it's very boring without any color. Uh, <laughs> it's not like amazing bullet journaling but I was getting stuff done and I was getting things down on the page and that's what really matters. You can see down here where I added in my tracker and again for some reason that's working for me. These are uh the little things that I took from Romanese Realm where you can make a little square and then once you're done with the page and you've either migrated um, or finished all of your tasks or you've marked things out as irrelevant, you can say that this page is complete and that allows me to know that I've done everything there and we can move on and no longer have to look at it. So yeah, it's working out well. You can see that I, you know, these things were all irrelevant because they didn't get done and I knew I wasn't going to have time in the next couple of days. So I basically, I should have probably like just rescheduled them with an arrow pointing that way, but I already had them written down on here. So I wasn't concerned that they would get lost and not get done because I can always say, okay, these are things you haven't done yet and move them to another day. So let's see what he says about the daily. Serves as your catch all for rapid logging. Your thoughts thought out each day yeah so basically this little dash is for any kind of notes and the little dots are for tasks very simple I'd never used the note before but you can see the difference between notes and tasks I like that you could certainly put a little bit of color you don't have to highlight the whole thing but if you made a note about writing or something you could put that color right there so that it could indicate to you that this little note is about writing I haven't gotten that together it's not part of the bullet journal method but I mean you could certainly do that if you wanted to it's an easy way and a great way to add some color again I'm just you know I'm cool with this so far then I had a little bit of wordage about Camp Nano. This isn't necessarily a collection. I just printed this out and I wrote some things about the struggles that I had. Um, my first camp, the cabins, how to validate, uh, the goal that I set, winning Nano, and would I do another camp? Which the answer was, yeah, it was pretty cool. And that was that. Um, and here we are on the 7th. Now, you might be wondering why on some days I have the washi up here and others on the bottom. I've found that when you add in washi, eventually the bulk will show 
and it'll be like this. Like the pages will look all weird and wonky up here and then these ones will be flat. So I like to make them more even so if they're gonna bulk, they bulk together if that makes sense. Um, I've had it in the past where I've only put washi on the top and then the pages looked crazy up here and then down here they were flat. So this is a little bit more even if that makes sense. Let's see what it says about pages in the back. 86. I didn't mark anything, so it looks like it was pretty straightforward. So the one thing I did mark in the back about pages is how people keep asking him, how much should I allot for the daily log? And he's like, as much space as that day needs, basically. That's it. You know, and I'm just trying to do one day one page per day and that's because that's what writer suggests but I haven't needed more than that now if I wasn't keeping my writing in my other journal because I'm trying to finish that um, insert up then I probably would need more space and right now um, you can see it's the seventh I don't have the eighth marked even though consistently for the last seven days I've only been using or at least six rather I've only been using one page I'm still saying no to wait until that day because it doesn't take much effort to cut it and put it on here uh, just in case I need more and you can see that I have open tests that's what these mean that they've started I've already started writing my thousand words for the day um, but they're not finished yet okay and so the next thing is rapid logging so rapid logging um, we talked about this in the beginning and I'm using all of these and that's working out well and I like the notes I like seeing the notes different from the task and before like I think it was just like a paragraph I'd be writing and I've been keeping with the rapid logging like they're just other than this page obviously um, they're very short little blurbs especially for a writer <laughs> they're very very short for me um, like some of them are whole sentences some of them are not but that's very short for me and I know some you know some people only have like two words and that's amazing I'm working on it like this has two words you're welcome so these are just like kind of highlights and notes for the day so that I can look back and be like okay that's when that happened and it's working out well so I'm loving that but other than that everything else is kind of you know stayed the same and in the back here, since we have two different ones, uh, it does talk about the review of the mental inventory, which I did show you, but I should also show you this back page where he kind of has a system set up for what should go on your mental inventory. And this is pretty much like the David Allen system. Uh, it's just a little bit more simplified. And I personally like the David Allen getting things done better than this one, but that's just me. You do you. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this is just all kind of common sense. People mostly do it on their own. Sometimes people need to be reminded, but for the most part, I think I'm pretty okay with that. Okay, so the next thing is migration. And you've already seen how like I'm handling that wrong. I'm just marking things out <laughs> and putting them on the monthly. Uh, yeah, but there's some things that I have migrated uh, to the next day. I don't know of any examples per se. Um... But I mean, I get things done. Things are getting marked off. See, like that got migrated. Who knows where I put it because everything's just black, but it was there and it got done. So there's that. <laughs> I'm doing so well. That is basically everything that I am doing so far. As the bullet journal method continues, I will start to add on to um, the rest of the things that he says in here that he does and doesn't do. And we will discuss whether or not I'm using them and why or why not I am not. But for right now, this is working out well. I've been able to write every single day. Um, no issues, no problems there. Loving the book, still hating the bookmarks. I've sort of just like braided them off to the side because they're irritating me. <laughs> But I haven't cut them off yet or taped them down, so we'll see how it goes. All right, so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.